Hi, welcome to Revenue Marketing Television, the CMO Insight Series. I am your host, Jeff Pedowitz, and today we have with us as our guest, Heidi Bullock, who is Chief Marketing Officer at Engageo. Heidi, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jeff. I'm really happy to be here. I, it's exciting to be on. Excited to have you. I know it's been a long time. We've known each other for a while. What yeah. an amazing company, Engageo, uh, just really paving the way with account-based marketing. So, you know, take a couple minutes and kind of give us your perspectives of um, the company, where it's at now, what you're doing as CMO. Yeah, sounds good. So, Engageo, for those of you that don't know, uh, we have an account-based marketing platform. And I think what makes us a little bit different is we really started initially to focus on measurement. So, for all of you marketers out there, regardless of your marketing strategy, often have a real hard time uh, really measuring your impact, especially early on. And I think that that's one of our big strengths. So uh, I think one thing that's exciting about Engage is we all use the product. <laughs> so as a marketing person, I feel very fortunate to market a product that I use myself. So we've been in business for a few years and we really focus on probably mid-market to enterprise companies. And uh, so far, so good. It's been an, a very exciting place to work. And I think where I'm focused uh, specifically is, you know, just growing the business. And one point that we'll probably get into this more in the discussion, but when I say growth, I really think about not only acquisition, but really the retention piece as well. You know, so it's funny when John first started a few years ago, um, really just even the words ABM were just starting to come out of the lips of, of many marketers. And now I just went to a couple of shows in the last few months and it seems like every single vendor is doing ABM or at least trying to claim some stake to ABM. So That's right. <laughs> given that, like, how do you, you know, as, as, a, as the, mar the, the head marketing officer, what are you guys doing to kind of differentiate and separate yourselves from the pack a little bit? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think when we, when I first joined the company, in some ways, I actually feel like it was easier because Engageo has been and is known for, you know, account-based marketing. And I think to your exact point, uh, I think when you're onto something, then everyone says, you know, that's what we do too. So I think, you know, I just really try to focus on our strengths and what we do really well. And I think, um, I guess to me, rather than focusing on, again, like the points that we can say as a company and our strengths, I really let our customers speak for us. And that's really the strategy I've used is, you know, leveraging their success and making sure that it's really well known, you know, they're succeeding with account-based marketing again, because we can help them measure that impact from a really early perspective. We can help them orchestrate those plays. And we really, I think the piece we do very differently than anyone else is help set up an account foundation. So again, you're very familiar with a lot of the marketing systems and they're lead centric. And our technology really helps, uh, you know, set up everything from an account perspective. So I think that's probably one of the key things that's different for us. And so, you know, um, again, I, I make sure that our customers are really who, who's doing our marketing, um, because again, you're going to always care a lot more about what a customer says. But I would say specifically, you know, we really help people get started. Because again, I, I guess I feel like I talk to people all the time that they think it sounds great, but just like, you know, you've been in the industry for a while, just when demand gen was, you know, kind of first getting uh, going and people talked about inbound marketing, folks were like, sounds good, we don't know where to start. So I think, um, again, because we help really create that uh, foundation, we help people get started. So I think I, I really try to focus there, but um, again, I'm a big fan of, of having, getting our customers out there and having them tell the story. Okay, so you really had a chance to be in some high growth, exciting companies mm -hmm. before this, with Marketo, and <laughs> you've been Maybe. riding this bubble for a while. But you know, has your approach um, as you build out your team changed at all? Are you still trying to find the same people at Engageo that did at Marketo, or are, is it moving so fast now that you need a different set of skills? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I think when I think of building the team, um, I really think about where we are as a business. So, you know, the folks that I'm going to hire, you know, when we're, you know, doing 40 million in revenue are very different than the folks that I might be hiring when you're doing, you know, 10 million in revenue as an example. So right now I really look for folks, um, obviously in key areas, we're not big enough that I can have a person that just focuses on social as an example. So I, I need well-rounded team players, but it's more a type of person that I look for. So I look for marketers that, can be innovative, that can move fast, that are really uh, thoughtful in what they're doing. So it's not a matter of just doing everything under the sun. It's a matter of being, you know, thoughtful, like what's going to drive the best results. 
Um, but to get more specific, you know, I have somebody that handles um, our ABM programs. I have somebody that really thinks about growth marketing. So they own content, social, and some, uh, you know, kind of, I would say, thought leadership. And then I actually have somebody on my team, and this might be interesting for your viewers, that focuses on customer marketing, specifically adoption, um, and really making sure that we're making our, again, our customers are real stars. So I think that might be something that's unusual um, at where we are at, as a stage of a company to focus so much on customer marketing. And I really recommend people do that from the beginning. You're, you're one of the few marketing executives I've talked to that actually does it, which is kind of interesting when, even if you don't have a subscription business software. Right. Most companies, you know, you have a lot of business coming from existing customers in one yeah. way, shape, or form, yet it seems like all the marketing is constantly focused on that new, you know, get get the next logo, get the next logo, top of funnel. But right. what about lifetime value expansion? And it really is an interesting dichotomy, so good for you. <laughs> for, yeah. for no, the, one thing I, the one thing I'll say that you see that's very interesting, and I think actually, you know, ABM is kind of a, a catalyst for a lot of this. It's getting a lot of folks in the B2B marketing space to think a little bit more long term. So, you know, growth is great. It's something obviously in Silicon Valley that's on top of everyone's mind, but it's irrelevant if you bring in companies for your business that then churn or, you know, ultimately just aren't profitable for your company. And so I think being cognizant of that early on and having a plan for it's great. And ABM helps you with that a little bit uh, for sure. But to me, that was a really critical hire for me. I just want to make sure we're thinking about it from the very beginning and making sure our customers can be successful. Because again, that kind of going back to my first point, I just think that word of mouth marketing and having your customers be your biggest advocates, you know, I think is just critical. So as someone that's kind of really worked in software and, and you're constantly working with all the greatest things, <laughs> What's your approach to technology strategically and you know, not specifically like any one vendor that you're using besides sure. the platform, but how do you view the world? How do you go into each year saying, okay, this is how much money I want to invest? How do you, what, you know, what are you planning in terms of adoption and usage for your business? Right. I th it's a great question. And I think, you know, something I think a lot about is not getting to the place where you have a Frankenstack. <laughs> I'm sure in your business, you see this all the time where marketers just get, you know, almost uh, just they fall in love with technology and think that technology will solve all the problems. And I think for me, I've taken a perspective of simplicity. Uh, I want to use technology that will help my team scale, that will help us be efficient, especially for me, the measurement piece is, is a big one. But I, I, the first question I always ask is, who's going to run the technology piece, you know, whatever tool it may be. Um, and if you can't first answer that question, that, that should be a red flag. You need somebody who's going to operate and, and run the tool. Um, and really, you know, what is your long-term term strategy and, and thinking about, you know, where you are, you know, if you're 5 million, 10 million in, you know, revenue, great. You might need certain tools. It might look very different when you're larger. You know, I was fortunate at Marketo, I could have a lot of tools. We had the budget for it. We could test a lot. But I think when you're a smaller organization, just focusing really clearly on what are your goals, what do you need to get done, where can technology help you, and again, who's managing that, running it, and, and kind of just making sure that you're thinking about, do you need everything under the sun? So I like more of a simplistic approach and just making sure we're efficient. That being said, I, I'm a big fan of testing things all the time. I think for your audience, and you see this as well, you know, a lot of the tools that you may have known two years ago are very different now, today. They all evolved. So I always make sure I sometimes investigating at new tools and seeing where things can help us. But if you find that a tool is actually, you know, not getting used or, you know, not really helping you be more efficient, it's probably, you know, it's not worth having. So I, I have some pretty strong opinions on that and just making sure, again, that you're efficient and you're not just building this stack that no one uses. Do you think that there's a specific technology category out there that was maybe overhyped and has not hit the mark? Oh, that's, that's a tough question. I, you know, I, 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 I think, yes, <laughs> I can think of not only one, but a few areas that I think, you know, are incredible. Um, but again, like they might be, it might not make sense to really have a full category full of those uh, technology stacks. I mean, I hate to call anyone out specifically, um, but I've definitely, I can think of a few right off the bat where there was a lot of buzz and you'd see a few vendors that were in the space and then there was like 50 all of a sudden and and, and no one really needed it. And you can see now there's a lot of consolidation in some key areas in MarTech. Um, and a lot of companies are, are getting, you know, sold just again, because standing on their own isn't as efficient. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, I, I guess one area I could say is important, but I think it got a little overblown was maybe predictive. Mm -hmm. um, again, a lot of those tools are, are great, really great, but you can see that they're all trying to build out and become a little bit richer in what they provide, which is great. So I, it's not a negative comment. And I think that, you know, some of the folks that were early on, it's, it's a really important uh, thing to offer, but I just think it exploded more than probably what the market could really handle or um, even understand, to be honest. No, it makes a lot of sense. So what are some of the things that you're focusing on now to help your team scale? Oh, ah, that's a great question. I think for me, it's making sure that we, um, you know, something I'm asked a lot is, you know, I, I was actually on the call uh, with a customer the other day and they were like, give, give us some ideas, give us some really innovative, great ideas and things we could do different. And I guess with my team, and you probably see this also in marketing, everyone wants to do something completely new and original. And, and my perspective is do what works. Um, if you've done, you know, we're doing a summer webinar series right now. And our, we did it last year and it was incredibly successful. We don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. <laughs> so I think a philosophy I have internally is, you know, I love innovation. I love great ideas, but execution wins every day. So I really keep the team focused on, you know, if we don't need to reinvent the wheel, let's not do that. Let's, let's do what works. We have data so we know what works and just stay focused that way. I think, I think that's a really important thing as a marketer. You don't always have to do the latest and greatest if you've got things that are working. It makes a lot of sense. So yeah. um, if you can go back in time, I mean, you've had an amazing career so far, but what advice Thank would you give a younger version of yourself? Now, uh, knowing what you know now. Uh, long yeah, I think it would be, um, so I can think it in, in roles that I've had in the past. Uh, I will especially say probably at Marketo, we were under a lot of pressure to drive growth. And at times it felt, um, it, it just was pretty intense. And I took it seriously and everyone that was on the team took it seriously. But I think having the ability to take a step back and really think about working smart, uh, probably more so than always working really hard. And, and I see this with marketing teams a lot where they feel like to grow, we've just got to do more, we've just got to do more. And I think it's taking a step back and doing more of what's right and being efficient in those areas. And I think, again, like I think ABM is great for that because, again, you can be hyper-focused and you can get great return from, from the, being focused on the right accounts. But I think when I uh, was my, maybe earlier in my career, I felt – the need to do everything under the sun. And I'd advise anybody in marketing, um, you don't have to do that, you know? And I think the other thing I would tell myself, and I'm trying to do this more now, is not uh, live my day by my inbox. I, I really set up my days uh, and focus on what I need to get done. And then I spend a, another part of the day dealing with email, but I don't let my email uh, drive my day. And in the past, I think I did. <laughs> That's a great. It's uh, it's a great story. I always remember that story. I remember with kids like the wolf and the sheep, and yeah. the, and the father, she, the wolf and the son, the wolf were up on the cliff and looking at the sheep below, and then the kid wanted to go run down and like attack all the sheep <laughs> and everything, and the dad was like, no, no, no let's wait. They're gonna come here. <laughs> right. So it's just I think you know as you as you probably get more experience, you just learn patience, right? More focus. That's right. So answer this question a year from now, uh, my team and engage you will. Uh, we will be making our customers just delighted. That is really my dream. I, I, I feel, again, uh, something I believe a lot in is it's not about me. It's not even about my team. It's making sure our customers just use our product and they actually go into a board meeting and they're really confident. They're not nervous and fearful about what they're going to show. You know, if they're a marketing director, they feel they can have a great meeting with their AVP on the East Coast. You know, if they're, you know, somebody as a marketing manager building programs with Engageo, they feel they can do it successfully and, and not feel nervous that they're doing something right because we have our UI designed correctly. So to me, I feel like our team will be making our customers happy and successful. And I'd even go so far as to say delighted. That would be what I'd hope. <laughs> it's not, now, how would you measure that? Uh, I, I like to measure that. I mean, it, it's a great question, but I mean, you can look at, for us, we look at our weekly active users and kind of, we have a number that we track there. We look at MPS, we have in-app surveys. Uh, we have a lot of ways to look at it. And I also, to me, I just go out and talk to our customers. And I, I think you can tell when people are happy and very pleased with the product and when they're sort of like, I'm using it, but I'd rather die. <laughs> and we don't, we definitely don't want that ever. So now that you've been in ABM for a while, 
what what would you say uh, is maybe one of the bigger mis uh, misconceptions about what uh, EVM is or what people there's think? There's so it many. There's so many. I think the biggest misconception is ABM is Tactic X. Um, as you know, I mean, to me, the biggest piece of ABM that's that's really critical is making sure that you have the right content for your buyer. It's personal, um, and you're really, really uh, find, like tuned into what they care about. I think that's the number one thing. And to me, when I often am, am talking to folks, and, and they might not be a customer yet, they, they'll say, oh, you know, we're excited. We're uh, doing ABM because we're doing direct mail or running ads. And I think that's a big misconception. I, I don't think it's as much about the tactics. I think it's about you know, working with your sales organization, picking the right accounts, and, and again, knowing them well, um, so you're offering them content and, and, you know, materials that are valuable for their business. That That's the biggest one for me. That's a good one. And well, something I've noticed sometimes is it seems like some of our customers in the market do an either or. So, right. well, I have to move my demand gen strategy to ABM. We're only doing ABM now. Um, yeah. Is that how you see it or, or should it be more complimentary or does it depend maybe? Um, on, I, I think to me, I, I never think it's all, uh, it's never that extreme. I, I will say I speak to some companies and, and maybe, uh, you know, their um, nuclear reactors is an example. Um, and there's only a few people that they might sell to a pure ABM strategy. Great. That's, that's fine for some, a business like that. But for most B2B organizations, um, a pure ABM play, it's, it's not probably realistic. So I always think that, you know, helping people with, you know, there's going to be a set of your accounts that are really meaningful for your business and ABM is great there, but it's not to say demand gen doesn't have its place. And I think it is dependent on the business. I think that, you know, obviously if, if folks have kind of a lower price point, they have, you know, one individual that buys the product, pure demand gen works great. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it's a lot more about your business and what you're trying to achieve. But again, in our, in our space, most B2B marketing orgs, it's probably a hybrid from what I can see. Good advice. Good advice. <laughs> I can't believe we're at time already. So it's so easy talking to you. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Heidi, for being on the program. And of it course. is so easy to see why you've been so successful in your career. Wow, thanks, Jeff. And it's been great catching up and um, it's been enjoyable all the years we've known each other and, and spent time. So thanks again for the opportunity. You bet. Thank you.